Welcome back to Double Play. I do not have a bloated hillbilly next to me. Instead, it's Kelly Keeks is joining hello, us. Hello, hello. Thank you, Kelly. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, I appreciate it. With Brandon being uh, in the process of moving, he'll be back next week. Uh, eventually, he'll be gone, so we'll probably I'll be bringing in different people around the office. But I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get a woman's take on some of these sports movies. Finally, we have a voice. That's and right. This podcast. That's right. <laughs> I'm, change, I'm changing the world uh, one Loving sports it. movie at a time. Uh, today we are doing uh, Bring It On, which was uh, yeah. Kelly's suggestion, mm -hmm. and Tin Cup, which is a movie that I've been wanting to... I haven't seen this in full, ever. Yeah. I didn't realize that until I watched it uh, for the show here. So um, let's get right into it. Um, let's start with Tin Cup, because we usually do it in chronological order here. Okay. Had you seen Tin Cup? I had seen it once, I believe in college. I couldn't really remember all the details about it. I knew the general storyline, but I didn't quite remember all of the cheese that was in the movie. So that was that was something yeah. to rewatch. Um, in case people haven't seen it, it's about a down-in-his-luck driving range pro played by Kevin Costner mm -hmm. um, who falls in love with a psychiatrist played by Rene Russo. And then he eventually, uh, he's very talented. He kind of always gets in his own way, very self-destructive, and makes his way to the U.S. Open, and he's playing against Don Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good movie, I think. I The the main thing is the ending. So he's a very self-destructive person in yep. the movie. Yeah, um, And that streak continues right up, right up until the very end of the movie, which when it's happening in real time is just infuriating. It is, uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't quite remember all of the details of the movie. The most infuriating part of this whole thing was that this man had zero growth throughout the entire movie. Like, he did not learn a lesson. No. He did not better himself. He did not become mature in any way. He just continued doing the bullshit that he was doing the whole movie, and he still got the girl, and he still got the accolades, and whatever. And I think that that's why people, like, I know a lot of people that love this movie so much. People my age, like, fucking love this movie. And I think that that's why. Because it's very much like, a, oh, you could just putz around, do nothing, be kind of good at golf, and you'll still get the girl, and you'll still get all the fame. And it just, it pissed me off the whole time. I'll tell you. Yeah. It bothered me. So, part of me respects it in a way, because people mm -hmm. don't change a ton. That's <laughs> so true. It's so true. It's it's very realistic in that way. Yeah. Sure. Can I ask you this? I, yeah. so I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen Kevin Costner in a role where he's such a fucking loser like he obviously is good at the game of golf but other than that he's kind of a dick like he's just this lovable like guy who goes around and does nothing and again he like lives in a trailer he like never wants to make something of himself he has no motivation like he's just he's not like a character you really like the only reason you like him is because he's an underdog I feel but even that like he's just kind of an asshole and I've never really seen Kevin Costner no. be this person because I feel like I always see him be like pretty heroic and yeah, and, go like, through a some strong like lead. And this time he's just kind of like you know he's got backwards hats on, he's putzing around, yeah, he's it's dirty. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like just, you go it's through some of his movies, like, that. like Untouchables. He's playing Elliot Ness, who's very heroic. Yep, yeah. Uh, Dance with Wolves. He's mm -hmm. he's the hero there. Bodyguard. Bodyguard. Even mm -hmm. like Field of Dreams. He's yep. definitely a guy that doesn't have his shit together entirely, but. You can tell he kind of knows that about himself. He's trying to fix himself. For sure. You know, yes. He's not. A, he's not a loser. This guy is a loser. There's always a story arc for the things that he's done, and it, he usually ends up on top again with all this growth and all this positivity. But yeah, Tin Cup. He's just. What the, What did he do for himself? Nothing. No. Uh, my biggest issue. That my takeaway. When the ending was happening, I was very frustrated and very annoyed, which I think mm -hmm. you're supposed to be, which I give Ron Shelton, the director, credit. Sure. Um, and he kind of does this with some of his movies. We, we covered White Man Can't Jump on the show with Brandon, and, like, Woody Harrelson's character really doesn't grow in that either. Yeah, he's, yeah, He's yeah, kind yeah, of true. this, like, guy that's just kind of a hustler, and he's a hustler, and he even loses the girl at the end. He's just mm -hmm. a hustler the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. Where Kevin Costner, my issue is not the ending, as I had more time to think about it. There's no way a psychiatrist would date this guy. Also, There's no way. Also, how about like halfway through, all of a sudden she's a shitty psychiatrist. Like she she's at the awful. beginning is like, I'm this, I'm yeah. that, I'm a psychiatrist in this town. And then like he comes in and she can't handle the fact that like he's in love with her. So she's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just a shitty psychiatrist. I'm barely even certified. And it's like, oh, well, well, who are you then? Like coming in here acting like you know everything to literally not even be certified or whatever. Like you're the only psychiatrist in the whole fucking town. Like you can't, he can't go anywhere else. It just... It's very far-fetched, and I have a problem. Like, I can get into the zone on a far-fetched movie, but this movie was had enough like of a, enough of a realistic backbone for it to not be yes. so far-fetched, and I feel like they just... 
They threw a bunch of shit together in the middle. I don't think Ron Shelton's very good at writing for women. Like, well, that's a fact. We, like, we, that is very clear. Yeah, like, this character is so... Like, being a psychiatrist is hard. She was annoying. And I wanted to like her because, again... Oh, oh, I had I had a little note at the beginning. Yes. I, um... Brandon used to find. bring notes. He'd scribble them down, like, on a piece of paper. It was, uh... It was go. kind of a sad... I loved... Oh, yeah, that's embarrassing. Yeah, you can just, and also you can his use handwriting was sad. You could tell yeah. it was writing with crayons. Yeah, barely... Yeah, <laughs> right, barely right. Barely literate. Of course, it was right. like, sometimes he had pictures where the words are too big. Exactly, we know that about him. Yeah. He can he can barely read and write. So yeah. it's actually, I'm actually shocked he even came with anything, so... No, he tried his best. Yeah, okay. You get well, confused a lot, but yeah. Good for him, you know? He, he always is trying his best. We just try to encourage... He's a brave, you know? he's a brave man. A simple man, but a brave one. Exactly. Um, so I liked in the beginning, like I, when we started the movie, you know, at the beginning, he's like, I'm going to tell you guys all a uh, riddle or whatever. And if you get it, right. you, uh, you get all my money and, and the business. And if you don't, like I get all yours, whatever, some bullshit. And he tells that riddle of like, uh, a son gets rushed into the hospital and the doctor is like, I can't perform surgery, uh, rushed in the hospital with his father. And I can't perform surgery on this child because he's my son. And everyone's like, what? What's the answer? And, of course, Renee, what's her face? Renee Russo. Russo yeah. comes in. And she's like, the doctor was a woman. Like, that whole like yes. feminist movement of, like, oh, I can't even believe. And I loved that because I was like, oh, yes, we're starting off on, like, a, here we go. Like, she's going to whip him into shape. Yep. Clearly, these guys don't know what the fuck is up. She's coming in. She's going to do it. Turns out she she just, that was the only moment in the whole thing she that I was She became one of them by, by the end. A hundred percent, which, is, which is, is again every like schlub's dream is for the girl just to give up and be right. and, like start fucking in the trailer. You know what I mean? Right. Like, sure, sure. She had Don Johnson with the Cadillac and like yeah. and the you know she's wearing all this preppy stuff. They're golfing this that. He's whatever. one of the, it, and he's an asshole too. Don't get me yes, started. Yes, but it says him, in the movie that he's one of the greatest basically golfers in America. He's, he's very wealthy, very successful, totally, and has his shit together. Now he. he they do show in only one scene though where he's an asshole. The rest of the movie is actually not a bad guy. He seems normal, but you can you can tell that there's something building up. But I will say that he. Sh I wish he was slimier. Yeah, like there, me too. There weren't enough moments right. where he was as slimy as I was hoping he would be. But from that moment, I had high expectations for Rene Russo as far as like being a feminist in this movie and teaching these men how to act like adults. And she did none of those things, so I was out. I was out on her pretty quick. Now. It's easy for, you know, for me to say, oh, you know, it's, this guy's a loser. Why would you date him? But it's also like Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner yeah. is incredibly handsome. Of course, yeah. He And she was right. There was one point where she was agreeing to help him uh, with his mental game, even though he had already confessed his love and whatever. And she was like, I have to admit, he's kind of attractive when he's arrogant and an asshole like this on the course or whatever. And I was like, oh, here we go again, setting bitches back. But I get it, because, yes, he was annoying and whatever, and it's kind of like, ooh, like, taking charge. But that's not the guy you want to marry. Like, that's not the guy you want to be around all the time. Like, you want to be around someone who can eventually accept defeat and or be a little humble about the situation. I feel like that really took away from the allure of Kevin Costner for me. Like, his just his refusal to grow up at all. Have you dated someone like this? Like this kind of like loser? Mm, maybe, yeah, like, yeah. Maybe a couple, not a golfer, like a play video games or something like that. Or? Yeah, I, I would say I have a, I could list a, a few names. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Of people that just refuse to grow up. Yeah. Something I'm slandering video. I like video games. I meant, I meant just that guy, know, like that stereotypical. You like, know that type. You know, everybody yeah. knows that type. Like you can like video games and then you can also like be a child who likes video games. Yes. Like there's a, there's a major difference in, in how you spend your time with your hobbies, I feel. People that are weird about it are weird about it, and people that are just like, I've got this quirky hobby that I like, then it's normal, you know? But I have a real life on the side, which Kevin Costner just did not have a real life on the side at all. He was just always wearing, you know, baggy, dirty clothes and shooting balls at old Volkswagen bugs. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it, so uh, I was doing some research in the movie. It was interesting. So Don Johnson was a last-minute hire. It was supposed really? to be Alec Baldwin. <gasps> oh, wow. I bet Alec Baldwin and Loki would be better. I like, think so too. I, he's just kind of he's I, better as like being an asshole. I think know? so too. He's I, like, such a good dick. Don Johnson of course Miami Vice and then uh -huh. later after this movie I think would go on to do Nash Bridges which was kind uh -huh. of this weird lame show on CBS. I remember that. But um but I think Alec Baldwin would have been would have yeah, been the best. Yeah. He would have been so good. What is Alec Baldwin in that he he kind of is that role like he's this like waspy dickhead. Have There's to also say. no guns in this movie, so he couldn't have shot anybody. <laughs> True. Another plus. That's probably why he turned it boss down. Boss baby? No, no, it's not. But do you know that in that movie he's he's a boss and also a baby? Isn't that it's so insane. crazy? <laughs> shout out to ex exciting reference. Shout out to Nate. Um, 
what the hell? Oh, I think I'm just thinking of like Glen, Go- Glen Gary, Glen Ross, yep. where he's oh, just the, like the, ABC, the preppy a asshole. A great, incredible scene where he, he lectures right. the guy. It's one of the g- best monologues in totally. movie history. Totally. He yeah. just always plays such a sleaze bag. I'm also looking up. He's, a, he's a nice one guy in movies. Beetlejuice. True. He is. An, th- is that the only movie that he's a nice guy? I feel he like I don't know any other like, movies. Yeah, he, he's, where he's good a at nice being guy. a dick. Yeah. And this would have been great because I could have believed him as a golfer too. And that's the thing I wanted to bring up is Kevin totally. Costner's athleticism. So Ugh. Kevin Costner made those shots, which is wild. He even made the really? shot with the hoe, like the guarding equipment. He made that shot, and I guess they had real golfers on set that couldn't do it. Now Kevin Costner, of course, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams. He did. He always loved baseball. He he's he's actually a remarkable athlete. Really? He was, um, I did not know this. He was in for Love of the Game, which he did after this. Which Have you seen that? It's a it's a baseball movie. It's also a love story mm. with Kelly Preston. I like it a no, lot. No, but I love Kelly Preston, so maybe I'll We haven't covered it for this show. Maybe I'll, I'll bring it yeah, back bring for it that back. one. I'll, I'll watch um, it. I'll bring it back. It's, it's a really good movie. It's a, it's a baseball movie, but it does have that love story. But he's throwing uh, – he's a pitcher for the Tigers, and he's okay. throwing a perfect game in it. And he's really throwing. He's throwing, you know, probably in the 70s, but it looks – his mechanics are all right. And, like, I'm – I'm a casual golf fan at best, but yeah. it looked legit. Like the sh- the sh- the swing looked good. It yeah. wasn't. Sometimes you watch, you know, Brand and I have watched a million of these these movies for the show, and sometimes it doesn't get it right. Like it oh, looks yeah, no. janky or weird. For or, sure. Like he he nails it. I mean, that goes a long way. They I guess they spent a lot of time trying to get it right. He went through a crash course, bunch of golfers, and they even had golfers on site. The second you held your putter on, they're like, no, you got to hold it this way. Interesting. Well, and I appreciate that. I appreciate me that too. a lot. My, uh, my, I watched this over the weekend, Father's Day weekend with my family. I was home and my dad was into it, so I was excited to watch it. But that reminds me, he is a big car guy, obsessed with cars, like a crazy person. And whenever we're watching movies, he'll see cars that are like, he's like, oh, that car wasn't even made yet. Or that yeah. color wasn't made yet for that car. And it's in here. Like he'll see mistakes like that. And I always think to myself, what kind of movie would I have to watch to be able to pick out mistakes like that but I guess if you're a real sports aficionado you pick out yeah, things like yeah, that yeah they had like pro For golfers sure. who have spent like, their entire time on the tour yeah. in fact the stuff like how Kevin Costner does that drop and he keeps mm-hmm. dropping the ball at the end yeah and it costs him the US Open yep, yep. that sort of happened in real life I guess it was it didn't cost them on the open but they were in a tournament and they just kept instead of taking the easier shot they, just, they were just so frustrated and so self-destructive they just kept taking that shot from further away than they needed to. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think the golf stuff is really strong here, and it's a big reason why um, this movie's big with golf fans. Golf yeah. fans love this movie, and they even get, like, Jim Nance, he's the announcer, and they get a lot of the press guys right, and they had a lot of ties to CBS, um, connections with the movie to CBS, so they've been able to get kind of the right people involved. So it feels like you are watching, to some extent, the U.S. Open. It feels very authentic, and that... Well, that holds a lot, and that that means a that means a lot when I'm watching a movie because I'll as a sports fan I'll notice that shit, and yeah. anybody I'm sure watching this this double play w- would notice that shit too. Mm-hmm. So I got to give Tink up a ton of credit for that. Ron Shelton's good at that; he's good at making it look right. White man can't jump. Mm-hmm. Those guys, it felt like you were watching real basketball. Like yeah. he's a really good sports director. He's directed a ton of sports movies, um, including Bull Durham, which we haven't gotten to yet. But this one, I feel we've nitpicked it a little bit with the Rene Russo stuff. Oh, definitely, stuff. yeah. I'm more so, I'm more so judging their characters in the movie, which I guess is kind of a good testament to the movie. It's like I, I feel passionately about how they acted in the movie or who these people were and how I just don't see eye to eye with them. But that means that they, you know, they sold their roles to me. I would say, um, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah. You said about the making it as legitimate as possible. My dad told me, I wouldn't recognize because I'm not a, really a golf fan, but he told me that there were just an incredible amount of like old golf guy cameos yeah. in, yes. in this movie. I don't, I couldn't recognize any of them. I don't know any of them. I do know that one guy, I don't know his name. He told me that I forget. One guy had asked Rene Russo's character at the end if she would help. I think that's Craig Stadler. I think, His yeah. nickname was the walrus. Yes, the walrus. Yeah, yeah, right. my dad told me that. So that, I was like, oh, interesting. But when that scene came on, not knowing who that man was, yeah. I thought he was just some random, like, I thought it was like a, a bit that they were working in where they thought she was like a hooker because she was hanging out with the okay. with the stripper, yep. fr- like the ex-girlfriend true, stripper. True, yes. And so I was like, oh, my God, this guy thinks she's a hooker. Like, wh- And there was only 10 minutes or 15 minutes left in the story. And I was like, how are they going to flesh out this storyline where she's like insulted that they thought she was a hooker and whatever. Turns out it was, he was just a bad actor because he wasn't actually an actor. He was, yes. a, he was a golf star. I have an so issue, there was no I have an issue with that storyline. So yeah. they, the idea is Craig Stadler's like, hey, I see what you've done with Kevin Costner's character. 
I, w- I think you should be a sports psychologist for a bunch of guys at PGA. Mm-hmm. There's no way after what he does in that 18th hole they would ever take her calls. Right. He's a fucking crazy person who's 100%. incredibly self-destructive that learned nothing. She's a horrible psychiatrist. And she loses her mind at the end and is encouraging this behavior because she's in love. And it's like, okay, I understand, yes, we're all, we all get swept up by love. But you need to do your fucking job. And she didn't do her job once. And I I have no I, – I didn't like her. I hated Watching her your partner – shoot themselves in the foot over and over again is one of the most frustrating things mm-hmm. an adult can go through because you're you're rooting for them if you know if you're with them long term you you're, you have stakes in that game totally you're you're in with them you're connected with them they, they're fuck ups to your fuck ups that's, mm-hmm. that's a good real how good relationships work mm-hmm. the idea that she would be like oh this is okay meanwhile she's someone that went to sc- being a psychiatrist is hard you need to go to school for many years then she said before that she was selling real estate. And maybe she, I don't know if she was successful at that. It sounded like she wasn't, but whatever. Yeah. She's a professional woman who's had a long career. She, the idea that she's gonna basically ride along with this guy that is going to keep ruining his life mm-hmm. seems like a. It's almost like a tragedy. It's again, it's this constant trope of like love conquers all. And I'm kind of sick of it, to be honest. Even in a movie like this, we see this. Like, it doesn't matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, as long as who you're with is who you love. And that's nice, but that's the, the least realistic part of the entire movie. Like, there's just no way that two weeks from now, when they're probably hurting for some of that cash from the fucking U.S. Open that he just blew up in smoke, they're going to be pissed off and there's going to be a fight and the yeah. dirty sex in the trailer isn't going to make up for that for that long. You know what I mean? No, like that's a just, good point. It's I, just I, ridiculous. I wish... So I do respect the ending with the Costner blowing up because mm-hmm. they, they say it the whole movie. We well, see, he was always going to do it. We right. see Cheech Mar- There's a great scene with him and Cheech Marin and they're just snapping golf clubs over and over. Yeah, I like And his that. best friend is kind of, is very frustrated because he kind of we're talking about with the relationship. He's like, no, I'm in it with you, man. I'm supporting you. I, mm-hmm. I, I want you to succeed and I'm watching you self-destruct is painful to me. And I kind of wish Cheech Marin hadn't taken him back as a friend. I am so... I was so mad that he... How quickly he rolled over. Me too. Like I, I really thought there was going to be a little more of a lesson to be had there. Yes, sure. Kevin Costner went out with his one like fat friend. I don't know who that was. Who like basically had a heart attack. Yeah, that, that guy. That guy was struggling. That guy was crazy. Yeah. And uh, and obviously didn't work out. But he even came back and wasn't very apologetic. Like no. he just he was such a. The well, whole world revolved around him the entire time, and it infuriated. It made me almost like not want to root for him. Obviously, I was like I was excited. Well, he's so charming too. Costner's so of charming. Of course, he's so charming, and like I get all that, whatever. And once he was playing, and when he played the game, when Cheech got him drunk. Yeah. And uh, and he had to play the game the next day, and he shot like an 83, and he was the laughing stock of the whole place, and you know everyone's laughing, whatever. And then the next day he's like, no, I gotta come out, and I gotta turn it around, and I gotta show them that I mean business. And I loved that version of him where he was really playing. Yeah. He you know set the course record, he crush it, he like you know, uh, I don't know, made people respect him. Yeah. And I was like, I like that version of him. And even when he started playing that last round. He, I was respecting him. He was against Don Johnson. Things were going well. Yep. I was like, wow, this is going to happen. He's He has shown growth. He's shown humility. He's, you know, being strategic. He's not this just guy who's flying by the seat of his pants and hoping for the best until that last until that last hole. And I thought once he, once he missed it a couple of times, I was like, all right, he's going to give up and he's going to play the safe way. And, yes, it will be boring that he played the safe way, but winning will make it worth it and he'll still have the bragging rights and whatever. When he kind of just decided, I'm not doing any of that anymore, I was like, all right, well, this is silly now. Like, this whole thing is silly. What was all this work for? What was all this bullshit? Yeah, maybe they'll make... Did they make, like, a Tin Cup 2? No, there a they sequel? It kind of looked like they could set it up for a second. Tinner Cup? Yeah, Tinner Cup. When they sent it... Or, uh, at the end, when uh, Rene Russo was like, you automatically qualify yeah, right. to play yeah. next year. Like, I kind of thought, all right, maybe this is I think they were trying to, for- to put some, you know, some potpourri on the pile of shit that his yeah, wife was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, with... <laughs> Hundred percent. So, uh, the Kevin Costner character, I really respect, and I respect that he committed to that. I'm going to give a white man can't jump spoiler, and so if you haven't seen that movie, skip ahead uh, thirty seconds. But in that movie, uh, Woody Harrelson loses the girl. He, yeah. He's he's kind of with Wesley Snipes, and he's kind of living this house life because she realizes he won't change, mm-hmm. and she leaves. And I believe that. I believe that. Mm-hmm. I wish this movie. I love that they stuck to who Kevin Costner was, but I don't. I wish. Rene Russo had left him at the end. I wish she saw him self-destruct and just walked away from the 18th hole and started a new life, whatever the hell, new occupation she's going to yep. find because yep. she jumps around from occupation to occupation. I wish she had done that because that would have been more believable. Mm-hmm. And this guy goes back to his Winnebago and then maybe he tries, he qualifies US Open, he tries to go next year. Mm-hmm. And that's his life. Because I just, I found that so uh, unbelievable. 
people. Now, Ron Shelton was interviewed about this movie a number of times about the ending. And he said, look, when I make my movie, you can either win the tournament or you can get the girl. You can't have both. I don't think this guy deserves either. I agree completely. But I do like that you can have one or the other. You can't have both. Because if he had won by acting like an asshole and got the girl, then I think it would have been annoying. Like, uh, when he was shooting it at first and he almost got it and it rolled back into the water. Yes. And then if he had gotten it again by, like, the second time he did right. it, if it had gone in that time, I think I would have been annoyed. I would Me have been too. like, holy shit, like, I can't believe he did this, whatever. But again, he's not learning any lessons. When he really had to, like, sacrifice this win for his own fucking ego, I was like, all right, fine. Yeah, he, he hopefully will lose some sleep over that, despite the fact that, yes, it was the biggest moment of the tournament. Rene Russo was right. That that's all anybody's going to be talking about for years to come. I guess. I don't think that's 12. true either. People do remember who wins the US. The golf fans remember. That's a big Why would you? Major. Right. Why wouldn't you remember who wins? Yes, right. But I crazy. do think that, I do think she had a point in that people would remember that. But I also don't know if that's what you want to be remembered for. Do you want to be remembered fuck up. for having to shoot 12 times? And, and it's like, it's... It's embarrassing almost. It's like it's the greatest, probably the greatest, one of the greatest chokes in golf history. 100%. All because you couldn't get out of your own way. Like, you remember, you, you would be a cautionary tale. At what point does your pride, like, or do you, I, I don't know if it's, if your pride is getting in the way of you uh, just taking the safe shot and whatever, or at what point does your pride show up that you stop doing this? I, I can't decide which, which use of pride is in this scenario, but I feel like if he had just swallowed his ego for a minute he maybe could have and uh, that guy couldn't and i i do and appreciate that and he now yeah until the u.s open part i feel like this movie is pretty like a pretty breezy get through like we had talked about air a couple weeks ago on the mm -hmm. show and that was a movie you can kind of just throw on and i hate the term shut your brain off because you're not doing that especially with air which is very intelligent yeah but you can kind of just relax and enjoy and like almost like you're hanging out with your buddies yeah, you can glaze over a little bit. Uh, two over two hours is too way too by long. The way. Two fifty, way too fucking too long. long. I didn't glaze. I don't glaze over, but I feel like I'm just kind of hanging out with my buddies. I feel like it's not a lot of heavy lifting. Agreed. And you just kind of like hanging out with the guys. The U.S. Once the U.S. Open stuff, it does kind of take a turn. But um, I and I I give the movie a lot of credit for that. You do feel like I'm sure you know the, the Rene Russo character isn't written very well, but mm -hmm. the other ones are written. That is kind of how guys hang out. Guys do talk. Guys do place bets on stupid shit all the time. Yeah, I don't yeah, mean my yeah. friends do. Mm -hmm. Hell. Just I've office. seen enough. I say I've, I've been I've been around yeah. here enough to know that. I mean, it's we, were, we were yeah. each putting three dollars in a cup. You say try to throw a, a ping pong ball into a into a shelf yesterday, yeah. and yeah. we were here for like an hour doing it. You guys will make games out of anything. Anything. It's and shocking. I, I don't know how. And you do it's it. never stops being fun. Yeah. It is always fun. <laughs> yeah. You're always competitive. It's just a great time. So that yeah. part all felt real. And I think Ron Shelton's really good at that. Ron Shelton's really good at writing and directing how it is being a guy. Yeah. And and, and that's why I was really curious to hear your knows, take on it. He knows dudes. He knows dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, I think that, yeah, I think you're correct. I think that maybe that's why this movie and maybe other movies that he's done aren't totally my cup of tea. And okay. I think that I get on people for the opposite. I always get mad at guys who feel like they can't, they won't watch a, a movie with female leads or like a heavy female presence because they can't relate. And they're like, oh, it's just not my favorite thing, whatever. So I get annoyed being like, give it a chance. You're just saying that. Like, she's a girl, blah, blah, blah. Just, it's a good show. It doesn't matter whose perspective it's from. But then a movie like this comes along where it's very much geared towards guys, men, the boys, like, whatever. And I just can't. I'm like, I, I get it. I understand it. This is cool. But it's just not, like, what I enjoy to watch. Does that make sense? Like, I would yeah, choose makes, makes, and we're gonna to get put into, it on. Maybe get some of that and bring it on. Um, oh, yeah, What do sure. you give it from 1 to 100? What do you grade in this movie? Um, 50 is dead average. 50 is dead average. Um, mm, I would say my per personal preference. It's whatever you think. I'm going to give great. it like a, like a 55. Okay. I think. So you know, just, just a little above average? A little above average. Not really my favorite. I think that there could have been a lot more dimension with, yeah, with Renee Russo. I'm, I'm pissed about how her character was, how she was just so lame towards the end. And then I think I wish Kevin Costner learned a lesson at some point, like learned a real lesson. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a 74. I did enjoy <laughs> that's this. A good, that's a good. I enjoyed score. this. It was um, I, I put it in that tier. Uh, last week we had Rudy. It's like there was like good but not great sports mm -hmm. movies. It mm -hmm. fits pretty comfortably in there for me. And this show, you know, we've done some horrible movies. We've done some great movies. You yeah. know, this is nowhere near like the Money Balls or Rocky or some of the For great sure. ones we've seen. How was my score? Is it fair, you think? I think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. That's, that's what you feel. That's your score. True, it's, yeah. It's, it just wasn't my number one. And I, I, I know I'm not going to push back. I think your reasoning, your reasoning makes sense. If you gave, if you said, come in and said 30, I would I would have I would have yelled at you. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I recognize that it's popular. I had, a, I had a, a boyfriend a long time ago who loved this movie. And I remember like, I couldn't remember 
exactly why and rewatching and I was like, oh yeah, no shit, obviously. Have you seen Tin Cup movie. Gooch? No. Okay. Yeah, it's it's in, it's it's. I, I don't it, I don't like golf. Okay. Have you seen Caddyshack? Yeah. It's that's Caddyshack. so much less about golf. It is. Well, it's, <laughs> I completely agree. It's Caddyshack agree. vibes, though. I think it's Caddyshack uh, vibes. It's I, not I, as funny, Caddy obviously. Caddyshack is so great. It's Caddyshack on Caddy another is, level, uh, yeah, obviously. Another level. But I do think that it's the same, like, we're all just fucking around and let's take the serious instead of golf, you know? Like, that's I think Caddyshack is so much more about class than golf. For sure, for sure. Where this is... Well, this is a, has a little bit of that. I feel like Don Johnson's does. character yep. is constantly looking down on Kevin Costner's being like, oh, like, you don't even know what this life is like. Like, you don't... You're not involved. You're not this. You're running some, like, bumfuck putting range out in the desert, and I'm here winning, you know, winning championships. No, you definitely have that. And you also see, like, when he goes and he's kind of shanking the ball when they're all kind of teeing off, like, the mm-hmm. dirty orcs he gets from the other mm-hmm. guys. Uh, I think Billy Madison is far better than this. So this oh, is a definitely. distant Are third. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, when it comes, I'm sorry, Happy Gilmore, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I always, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always I mix them up because he you. calls his production company Happy Madison. They came Madison. at the same time. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I, I have. You know, Happy Gilmore way ahead of this. I have Caddyshack way ahead of this. So this is a distant third for me, but it's still totally a, I think it's still a good movie. Um, totally agree. I wanted to talk about what was in the box office when this came out Ooh. because this opened at number one, and no it didn't make a shit ton of money. It didn't make crazy money, but it was a modest hit. Mm. Um, and it was number. It opened number one. It was uh, April, August, excuse me, the end of summer in 1996. Now that's a great, uh, great end of summer movie, isn't? Um. No, I guess the Masters and all that is, like, in the spring. That's in the spring. And this yeah. was right before uh, Tiger Woods went pro. Oh. So they, uh, Ron Shelton was saying if we had just released this a couple years later, it would have done so much bigger because the golf totally. had a huge one. But it still did open number one, made $10 million opening week. Nice. Number two that week is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's called Jack, and it's about Robin Williams, um, who is uh, oh, I think I've seen is this. basically playing a 10-year-old. He ages yeah. very quickly. It has a bizarre cast, Diane Lane. Bill Cosby is in it. I've seen this. It's a yeah. very strange it's a movie. Really weird movie. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who directed The Godfather. No way. Very strange. That's a that's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. Uh, a a Time movie. to Kill, um, which is a has some a great Samuel L. Jackson performance. Mm-hmm. Kind of put Matthew McConaughey on the uh, in the limelight. It's a a movie I don't particularly like. It's kind of kind of a mess. Um, I don't know but what it's I don't uh, think. it's it's it ha- it's a very top. It's a very Jekyll and Hyde movie has some mm-hmm. good performances, but it's kind of a kind of disaster. Uh, a time, uh, and then the fan also opened this week. So this week you had two sports movies. The fan is a movie with Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. Wesley Snipes plays like a Barry Bonds character, and Robert De Niro is a stalker fan. Right, I was gonna say, isn't it like a cr- uh, thriller? It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw it in the <laughs> theaters. So it was awful. Uh, really? Oh, in shit. fifth place, in its seventh week in release, is Independence Day. Ooh. Um, which I just covered for the my blog series, Top 100 Movies of the 90s. I have it, I think, 57th. Um, it's very wow. good. What else we call it? 96? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Escape from L.A., which is the Kurt Russell uh, sequel from Escape from New York. Uh, Matilda is 7th. <gasps> Matilda! In its third I wish week we could in wa- I wish we could have watched that for this. Uh, it wouldn't make a lot Matilda. of sense, but it yes. Wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, but, I, but I love Matilda so much. And then, uh, and then Alaska, which we have never heard of. Uh, it was in eighth place. In ninth place, though, is Bordello of Blood, which is a horror movie starring Dennis Miller. Ooh. Um, it's very bad. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, Tin Cup, like, had a decent, like you said, it's a perfect end of summer release. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a casual watch for the most part. You can just kind of, I can imagine, I didn't see in the theaters, but I can imagine, like, 1996, summer, some good air conditioning. Totally. Let's go. Right. Everybody's trying to get in. Wait, I had one more note that I forgot. Okay. Um... There was the part where they, uh, Kevin Costner and Renee Russo were, I don't know, something happened where they finally were going to have sex. Oh, yeah, she caught Don Johnson being a dick to those kids. Yeah, that one scene where he's, he's like, a mean person out yeah. of nowhere. He's so <laughs> unnatural, yeah. so bizarre. It's the worst scene. Yeah. Easily. He's, yeah, he's all of a sudden, earlier in the For, for no the reason show, he's mean. They make a joke being like, oh, you know this guy, he's an asshole to kids and old people and, and dogs. dogs. Yeah. And they, and then this one scene, he is mean to all three in one false In a matter of 20 re- seconds. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But then right after that, Rene Russo decides like, fuck him, I'm going for Kevin Costner, whatever. They start fucking in the, uh, the trailer, whatever. And I wrote down that there were just too many golf references for sex in that time. Like they kept, they were like, oh, tee it up. Yeah, ooh, yeah, this, ooh, that. It yeah, felt like one yeah. of the, you know, one of the emails from the sales team. It was the worst. <laughs> It was the worst. Party? Right. Yes. Like, it was <laughs> so bad. I have never, like, to the point where, I, again, I'm watching it now with my whole family. And my dad was like, this is too much. He was like, this is ridiculous that this, that all these, like, cheesy-ass references are happening right now. Like, it, it was the worst. I hated it. So that was another uh, another complaint I had. MVP of the movie. Who Who's the best, what's Ooh. the best part of this movie? Best thing about this movie? Best person? Mm, I was thinking about that yesterday.
yesterday and I really couldn't figure it out. I might have to say Cheech, and that is okay. a ridiculous thought. If you told me He's the, the heart of the movie. If you told me at the beginning that I was gonna pick him as an MVP, I would say you're lying. Because I, I don't really love him in movies. I think that he just you know, he's always the same. He's just he's he's the one same guy. But um I think that he was the only one that really called him out on his shit and he broke all his golf clubs and yes, he came back too easily, but I do think that at least somebody spoke up about something. So I, I give him MVP for that. My MVP is Costner. I think it's a great performance. He plays it perfectly. He doesn't, he never tries to be too likable. He's just like, mm -hmm. I'm this guy. If you like me, great. If you don't like me, fuck you. That's fair. Um, I love this self-destruction stuff. It felt very real. I've had some temper tantrums before and I can completely, like he had it down pat. Like you start off slow it's like a simmering and then it immediately just goes to a boil mm -hmm. and i've thrown when i was a little league i threw a bat at umpire like i've <laughs> had those like just complete meltdowns like because i'm very competitive same and well and that's I'm, why i don't I'm like, like a games. child when i lose i mean you know, I, do you know that's like me I, it's, everybody always plays games all the time i, I never get involved because i am competitive to the point where it's like okay you gotta leave because it's annoying it's anno you become I am, like an asshole i am such an asshole i am the most sore loser of all time even even like when we do trivia like i am oh, the I, worst i had a meltdown fucking when we, when loser like and i'm sorry i just i want to win like i want to win i want to feel good if i lose i hate myself and i'm fucking furious and that uh, is absolutely. just that's it so i'm not great with uh, i always say no to games because it will turn into a bloodbath and people won't like me by the end of no it. one likes me yeah, like my yeah. mom i remember my mom took me bowling when i was like seven and i had a meltdown i, mm -hmm. I was thrown i just threw the ball into another alley i was so pissed off <laughs> yeah and she's like no one's gonna want to play games if you behave like this exactly and, I just and black she, out with anger she's just, not wrong like when we lost a dozen my team like i was so mad i went like off in the like by the bar mm -hmm. Vibs bar mm -hmm. that area and i kicked a trash can i screamed <laughs> fuck i'm like 43 years old i was a tricky <laughs> like what are we doing here Craig? but like i want my my attitude is you have 80 years in this life mm -hmm. so everything i'm doing i want to do I, I take everything as serious as i can so mm -hmm. i don't look at it as everything it's just a game it's like yeah but i'm playing it and i'm spending whatever how many seconds minutes hours of my life doing this yeah, like i wasted time doing this right. i want it to come want out it the way go, that i want it to right. come out yeah like, i don't want to have i don't want wasted time to be here because then again like i am now i just won't do it moving forward i will not play games it's a waste of my fucking time because if i if i win yes that's amazing and i feel good but that the feeling from that win doesn't last long enough to make up for the fact that I could potentially lose and beat myself up about it for three weeks. I love competition so much. Yeah. So I'm too. doing that roof. By the time people have seen this, I would have done roof ball with the yak. I'm doing that tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, I want to win. Yeah, and I'm course. a little afraid, like, I, because I know myself, like, if I don't, like, am I going to throw a temper tantrum and, like, oh, like, like the camera's there? There's, no, there's no way I can go hide and, like, have a meltdown. People love a temper tantrum. Temp I know, tantrum. but I don't. But they love to shit on a temper tantrum. I, I don't. Is I the don't. Thing. You'll get hate. Uh, we always do an LVP, least valuable player. Mine is going to be uh, Linda Hart, the actress who plays Doreen. This Ugh. is the stripper. Yep. She's she, the worst. This, what, I, I don't, I mean, she, I'm sure she's a nice woman. I don't even know if she's even alive anymore. Let's see. She was legitimately she is alive. the worst. Like, um, she's just not. And they shouldn't have cast her. No. Like, it's just bad casting. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and also, kind of just a completely unimportant part. Like, what was she doing there? So there was another woman in the movie. Like, it's I, just... I think it's... I, I, the part where they go to the strip club and they're, you know, she's trying to... They're trying to... she They owe her money and yes. whatever. That's all fine. But then I didn't realize... Pretty needless, I must have, though. Yeah, totally needless. And I must not have realized in the moment that they mentioned that she was Costner's ex. Yes. Because then, finally, when she, like, shows up at the fucking U.S. Open... And she's all over Rene Russo being like, oh, mm, like all this, like, that's why we didn't work out or that's why this, that's why that. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you're, you're bad vibes. Like, stop. I don't It's a I don't really like poorly written character. I hate the I, so maybe the actress is, is good, although I don't, I don't think she's, I can't imagine she's great. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe it was just the character was very badly written. But yeah, the character Linda Hart is my, uh, my LVP. Okay. Um, my LVP is, is uh, Rene Russo. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, straight the, the up. Way, the, she, the actress or the, or the way it's written? The, the, oh, the, the way her or? character is written. However, she portrayed the character however they told her to, I like Rene Russo as an actress very much however they told her to portray that character was just like she was a brain dead idiot by the end and she that was. bothers me like she was not um, I was not inspired by her I was not feeling proud of her in any way like no they, you, didn't they done, up, you didn't want to end up in a Winnebago no absolutely not well dirty. even that like they're they could have made that ending where they ended up in a Winnebago and everything is ridiculous and she throws it all to the wind, but I don't know, add a little something that shows that she still has her head on her shoulders and I feel like they just let her get lost in the sauce and I hate when they let the female characters do that. They who just they drop their whole life for a man. That drives me fucking crazy. I think her IQ dropped forty points. Easily. Easily. Wild. No joke. Like it was it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. So Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man. 
And here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the Commuter Collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan Commuter Collection. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way. From your commute to work to your 18 holes of golf, mobility is everything. It's time to feel confident without any of the hassle. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy to look and feel good. With Gold Fusion anti-odor technology, you will be smelling fresh and clean all day long. On top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable. So you can ditch that dry cleaner altogether. Check out Roan's commuter collection today. Okay, bring it on. Now this is a movie you are you. This is you like we need to cover this movie. Bring you, it on. You said it's cheerleading sport. I said yeah, sure. It is. I mean, it, it is. is. No, it, it is. is. It is. It's fine. It is. And I, it, especially now. Especially we're, now. We're pretty liberal with what yeah. sports. We just, you know, we do. We have to do every sports. Two sports we do every. Mm-hmm. So I'll yes, sure. yes. Um, it's not a. It's not a like a top five sport, but it's certainly a sport. I would it's say. Cer- sure. Yeah. Um. What do you love about Bring It? Why did you say this is one I really want to talk about? So this movie came out in the year two thousand. I uh, was a cheerleader, not in any way as good as any any cheerleader like you think. Like, oh wow, I've been to a competition like one time. I was shitty. I was never really good. I could never do flips because my my you know limbs are disproportionate. It just was really never in the cards for me. Yeah, it was hard. Okay. I was a flyer because I was skinny, but I was too tall, so I was top heavy, and it was just really a disaster all around. But I my spirit was there. I really wanted to be good. I really wanted to be involved in it. And so I was like ten or eleven when this movie came out, and I was right in the middle of it, just like really thinking, wow, I could have a future in this. This movie came out and it was like PG 13 or something. I remember like being allowed to, oh yeah, I remember being like allowed to see it because it was a cheerleading movie. And the idea of it was so funny and good. And I could kind of relate to like the the feeling of competition and the feeling of wanting to like do well with this team and make a better team or whatever. I just thought the story was amazing. And I think the acting is amazing. Like it's uh, Kirsten Dunst. We've got um, Eliza Dushku, H- Dushku, Gabriel Union, Gabri- Gabriel Union, yep, yep. Um, Jesse Metcalf. Yep. Or is it? No, no, no. Sorry. Not Jesse Metcalf. Jesse, yeah, I think so. Jesse Bradford. Jesse Bradford. Bradford sorry. Jesse. Jesse Bradford. And, um, you know, and a handful of others who are fantastic. But I just think that, Above all, this movie is fucking hilarious. Like, it is so funny, and it's crazy to me that more people, like, haven't seen it. Actually, no, I feel, it's like, a a huge lot, hit. I feel like a lot of people have seen it, though. Like, it I was I was kind of surprised that you hadn't seen it, but then I was like, all right, be well, realistic. Like, yeah. this it, this movie, like, molded my life. I watched it 12,000 times. No, and it, you got to remember, too, it came out when I was, uh, it came out in August of 2000, so I was 20 years old. Oh, yeah. So well, I was, I'm kind of surprised was, then that you weren't, you weren't out, you know. Sorry, Cooch, fucking <laughs> yeah, asshole. that's crazy. I'm surprised, though, you weren't, no, it's like. it's not crazy. It's who I am. I'm surprised you weren't, like, out, you know, like, this was such a good, like, oh, bring bring a girl to the movie theaters to see Bring It On, and, and you both enjoy yourself. Kind when of you're movie. in college, you're not going to see a movie by high schoolers. That's just not happening. I, get, I, don't, I disagree. I mean, I disagree. Oh, 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 here, let's talk about what else was out. Yeah. By the way, Bring It On was not expected to be a hit. Um, yeah. This, once again, kind of shows that movie studios don't especially back then i see it's still true now don't know how don't know how effective or what movies females want to see they've yes. just always been bad about it's that so bad i know um the art of war came out which is a wesley snipes movie Ooh. that was supposed to be number one by a mile nope mm-hmm. bring it on made 17 million its first week art of war made 10 also out in theaters this is all once again late summer they this is a dumping ground typically yeah. this is the week before labor day which is they crazy had no confidence in this movie this is right before i like went back to school you know it was like yeah Ooh. so it was the talk of the fucking town i'm sure well, yeah. yeah and like uh the cell uh which is a bad jennifer lopez movie was uh in its uh, oh, se- yeah, second release movie. space cowboys which is a clint eastwood movie about astronauts which is mm-hmm. bizarre it's uh the original Kings of Comedy, which is like a documentary about, not documentary, but it's like basically a movie. showcase of comedians. Yeah. What Lies Beneath, so that's what I was seeing. I remember what I Lies that Beneath the is a great Harrison movie. Ford, Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, the Replacements, which is another sports movie, uh, is on here as well. And Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. Um, I, can I tell you, I was a massive Nutty Professor fan. My dad and I saw all those movies in theaters. Really? <laughs> yes. I think present day. I saw day, the first one in theaters. Like, I don't know how I would like it if I were to rewatch it right now, but my dad was a big Eddie Murphy fan, and he, like, my mom didn't like going to the movies, so we always went to the movies, and we saw all the Nutty Professors, and, like, I just, I laughed my fucking ass off. I thought it was the funniest shit of all time. <laughs> yeah, the, clum- the, the clumps, 
I mean, that, I have not seen The Clumps. I'm sure it's a, a fine Clumps film. Is, again, sure. I, again, I have no Shock, idea how these movies are. Shockingly, I, I looked, they did not get any uh, Oscar. It did not get nominated for Best Picture that year. What? Oh, The Clumps? Yeah. Yeah, you'd be surprised, surprised by that. Yeah. yeah. I, I Personally, I was shocked, but, yeah. you know, to each their own. Uh, um, um, so I was confused by this movie. Okay. Um, and so was Roger Ebert when he first reviewed it. And I can I can totally understand where he's coming from. This movie looks like a like a like a Disney. I don't watch a lot. Of, a Disney kind of Disney Channel came out after. Like I, yeah. I'm older than Disney Channel when it was like making all these movies for teenagers. Yeah. But it has that look and feel of something that should be for young children. It's very colorful. Does it's very it? bright. I guess I the way I it's shot. Never, Only the way it's shot. I guess so. Yeah. With but all the But then when you hear stuff. what they're saying and mm-hmm. look at what they're doing, it's almost like our American Pie R-rated movie. Yes. So it's this That's weird. That's more how I see it though, because I feel like American Pie also has the same kind of film. Like you know what I mean? Like the same. I have never thought maybe just because I I knew what it was when I was watching it and I knew that it was like older than me and I had seen the yeah. trailer and stuff so I knew it wasn't like a kids movie. I've never thought of this of this movie as like looking like for little kids. Yeah, I felt very much like yeah. it was very very young. Yeah. And I can understand. So my wife, she's 34. She's like, I loved Bring It On. Yeah, fuck yeah. It was incredible. So she was like, what, 14, 12 or something when this came out. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, I love this movie when it came out. And I'm like, I completely get it. I understand why a girl that age would love it Mm -hmm. because it's your parents probably let you see it. Mm -hmm. It's very risky. It pushes the envelope a lot. And in fact, there's a scene where they had it. um, It almost got an R. Mm -hmm. So uh, the scene when he puts his finger inside of her. Oh, yeah. Which is so Fuck, fucked by the up. Way. You don't think at the time That's you were like, crazy. oh my god, gross. But now looking back, you see that and you're like, what the literal fuck? Like that guy was a, a predator. Yes. Like, what the yeah. hell is going on? And that also negates like the entire, or no, not really negates it, but okay. I feel like we didn't even lay out this movie. The yes. The, the plot of the movie is that there is a uh, a main character, uh, Torrance Shipman. She's played by Kirsten Dunst. She becomes the captain of the cheerleading squad for uh, Rancho Carne High School, which is a high school in California that consistently does well in cheerleading competitions. They have more wins than their school football team, and so they are just like the cream of the crop. They're the best in the state. They continue to be the best, whatever. The uh, A large group of seniors was graduating that year, and so... Uh, Torrance becomes the captain and she has to now create this team and carry on the legacy of the cheerleading team and in doing this obviously there's all kinds of snafus they have to you know uh, have all these people try out everybody sucks whatever blah 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 the whole uh, uh, like running undertone of the movie is that the football team is terrible Mm -hmm. and they are good but still the football team like makes fun of them all the time right and there are a couple of men on the cheerleading team and then you know there's the whole thing like oh you're so gay like blah blah blah. you know a lot of a lot of f-bombs being thrown around a lot of f-bombs and the guys are are not gay one of them is straight one of them is he says he's controversial or is that what he says yeah they talk about it pretty open but it's actually pretty like it's pretty progressive yeah yeah, it's 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 a progressive conversation to be had this whole movie is very ahead of its time no totally yeah that's why i'm like i love this movie so much but anyway so um in the movie there are parts where they like they come to a head the football players and the cheerleaders are there together and the cheerleading guys are getting made fun of even though the football players are losing and the cheerleading guys are like you guys just fucking lost like what is your problem like why are you giving us shit so you like the guys on the team the cheer team right until this moment you're bringing up where they're like practicing and whatever and these guys start dicking around the one of them specifically is like literally sticking his finger like up her pussy like while While he's like while they're working right like while they're like you know practicing the routine he's lifting her up ahead of him and that's another thing too that's interesting is that in cheerleading and again I was in cheerleading at the time so I knew this role and people who did cheerleading at the time knew this role in high school most high schools depending on the size or whatever you can't have men on the team that's not even a thing it's only college okay. so watching it already felt like watching college cheerleading yeah and so them being on the team it was like oh my god this like sexy scenario yeah. where like there's these guys who are yeah they're like touching you in vulnerable places they're yeah. holding you up whatever and to see that happen is bizarre it's and bizarre especially watching it back was very now, bizarre it's like, what the fuck? i know i guess they were doing it you know remember it's 2000 so i think they were doing it more for i guess comic relief for not, sure not, for which sure which also well, it was supposed to show that like don't worry the guys on the cheer team aren't gay like that yeah, was kind yeah. of that that vibe so which kind of sucks so there's a scene yeah. so then right after that he smells his finger hate it and that was uh, they so, so gross. they immediately were going they got an r yeah so they so what they did was they took away as few frames as possible so we actually don't see him smell his finger what you see is just this and then you see the aftermath of him like kind of like 
making a face. But you don't act so because he they makes remove a joke, though. those. He makes a he joke make a later, joke. and he's like, "Smell my finger," yes. and it's like fucking but sick. But they like, they removed disgusting. him actually doing it, and that got them the PG thirteen. That's yeah, how yeah. close this was to an R. Wow, wow, wow. Which is like that's that's how it really went I've right seen, to the brink. I almost am I'm gonna say that I've seen him do that though because I think that I had the DVD with the extended scenes and I'm pretty sure I saw Maybe, it. Maybe, right, because you can get away with the rating there. it sounds, there. Yeah. right, right, right. But you, it, it gets really close and then, but it, it does. doesn't. But, um, but the other part of this movie and I think the most, the, one of the more interesting parts is it talks about cultural appropriation It also talks about mm-hmm. just like, stealing ideas. And this goes back to like 1950s rock and roll mm-hmm. when all Elvis Presley and a lot of these, uh, Pat Boone, a lot of these white singers stole music from black singers mm-hmm. and made rock and roll their own when it really wasn't theirs. And this, uh, this white school mm-hmm. steals a bunch of routines from East Compton. Mm-hmm. Unknowing, Kirsten does this unknowingly. It's the old captain that did it. Yes. And you have kind of that interaction with, uh, with the black school and the white school, and it's very interestingly done. It's not, I think in a lesser movie, you'd have it, a cat fight, or you'd have, uh, it would just be kind of like cliche, where I feel totally. like this is more like, they're always sizing each other up, and almost always like, uh, using cheerleading as the vehicle to have their fight. 100%. And uh, what does it mean to earn respect from the other school? And yes. it, there's a lot of that. And that stuff is the strongest part of the movie to me. I think that e- you're right about how it, how it comes about, how it all comes up is so interesting because it's not, it's clearly like this is a new a new time, a new captainship, a new uh, team. And uh, Kirsten Dunn's character doesn't want to keep doing this. She feels, she learns this information through... Um, Eliza Dushku's character comes in. Her name's Missy in the movie. Missy comes to the new school. She's a gymnast. She came from East Compton and or from around from around, around the area, there. Yeah. And uh, and she comes and she auditions or you know try, does a tryout for the Rancho Carne cheer team. And she is an excellent tumber, tumbler, so she does all the flips. But she has a bad attitude. So that's kind of the whole thing is they're trying to like make her respect the sport because nobody respects cheerleading until they're in it and whatever. And so Torrance, being the good captain that she is, tries to show her, listen, this is, it's, you know, just like gym, uh, just like gymnastics, just like a competitive sport. You just have to get into it because you have the skills and you'd be great at it. And so she does and whatever. But then they show her the dances that they have to do. And Missy, uh, the character, up and leaves. She just gets out of there. She's like, what the fuck is this? I'm out, whatever. She runs into her car. Torrance is running after her and she's like what the fuck like I stu- stood up for you in front of everybody why are you acting like this you're an asshole and she's like get in the car I gotta show you something drives her over to East Compton brings her to this practice shows her that the the um, East Compton Clovers which is Gabrielle Union's team she's the captain of the Clovers they are doing the exact same routine and better by the way so much better just it's it looks so amazing Torrance has like a fucking mental breakdown. Gabrielle Union confronts her and is like, what are you bitches doing here? You're just seeing more of our routines, like blah, 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 whatever. And Torrance is like, I had no fucking idea. Right. And she's like, yeah, you're right. I've never seen you before, but I've seen that ugly redhead that came before you, which yeah. was the old captain, blah, blah, blah. So then after that, Torrance comes back and she's like, what the fuck? We have to change our routines. They have to go to uh, regionals or something like a week later. It's too late to change the routine. They go. They perform the same fucking routine as the Clovers because the Clovers end up raising enough money to go. And so they these two teams, this super white team from California, you know, wherever, proper, and then this, uh, like, pr- predominantly black team yeah. from East Compton are performing the same routine. It looks bad. It looks insane. The... Uh, Toros get in trouble. They're yeah. like, you stole this fucking right. routine, clearly. And because you were at Nationals last year, you get a bid to go again, even though this was atrocious. Do not come with a stolen routine. And so that's where the rest of the movie starts going yeah. off, where they and, have and, to really and, and, prove and, that they can, right. that they belong there. Did, did, what you were a cheerleader watching this? Were your, were, you, were those your favorite parts? What, what, what did you enjoy about the movie the most beyond just the cheering? Did you like the? Did you get the cultural appropriation stuff? Yes, you, even totally. back then. Even back then, yes, because and it honestly it it made me think a lot more about what we were doing and like the music we were dancing to and the things we were listening to and I think it kind of set the tone a little bit in my school like I know that we where we were cheering and what we were doing we weren't necessarily dancing to like rap or or like those kind of songs but it definitely went kind of like more bubblegum after that I feel like all of our routines were like very safe very like mashups of pop songs and stuff like we never incorporate not until I was like in high school did we start incorporating like rap and that yeah. kind of music again and I think because everybody was always kind of talking about it and there was this like feeling of okay well we're all white here and this is bizarre and this like it, you know we just saw this movie and we're all involved in this and whatever but I think that my favorite
favorite parts of the movie were really just the the struggles that they all had to go through to prove themselves as to, you know just to be taken seriously both Torrance and uh, Gabrielle Union's character yeah. they were coming from a little bit of poverty have never made it to nationals before they had to go on to a um, a uh, like talk a, show like an Oprah type yeah like show. an Oprah yeah. uh, Loretta was her name they yeah. had to go on Loretta's show to raise the money to go to nationals and it just it's I loved how both Gabrielle Union and Kirsten Dunst's character did whatever the fuck they needed to do for their team. And I also liked that they, even though they were rivals and didn't like each other, they had like a mutual respect yes. thing for because they knew that both of them were busting each other's. Like they were busting their asses to do the best for the people that they were supporting. And I just thought it was awesome. It was very much like, it, it was more like women fighting smart than, um, you know, just catty bitches. Which yeah, I, this which is I always appreciate. This is a movie that visually is very of its time. It's very uh, colorful. Yeah, it's shot very two thousand. Like you immediately watch, you know, well, this is happening in two thousand. Yep. Um, but like Gooch brought up a good point, saying it really was uh, like ahead of its time with a lot of this stuff. Now, Gooch, you like this movie a lot. Yeah, I mean, I have a sister Kelly's age, so I grew up. Just, there you go. I watched this a million times yeah. growing up, and it's funny. Like it was like funny for me when I was seven years. Did you old. like the little brother character? I can't even remember the little brother character. He was like he, an he asshole. Farts on he her. was just like, yeah, he's so gross. Oh, yeah, he's I would so, do that shit. It's pretty great. <laughs> later, he steals, later he steals uh, the little spanky pants and puts yes. them on his head and walks around and goes, hey, ladies, are you in a giving mood? And yeah, I'm like, yeah. you're like 10. That's major. Ew. Little, that's little brother energy. No, all day. Big, no, you he, have an older he's, sister? He is maybe, a, yeah. maybe like a top five little brother. And I feel like he doesn't get the respect he deserves. Like, no. He that, was such an asshole That kid's little brother. all the stuff. See, yeah, he, he really, he was really gross. Like, I hated him as a little brother brother character like in a good way he, he made me hate the him. jesse jesse bradford yeah character oh I, my god now i found him to be kind of annoying the i was only, in love with his him. only <laughs> redeeming qualities was he liked old things it's like oh i like this old band i i drive an old car <laughs> It's like, all right, well, who are you? You're he just pretending. Punk. You're like, you're. He you're likes the a, clash. He's like, a he was so he's different. Like, <laughs> he's nothing organic about this person. Well, he's they just... had to have somebody in there that counteracted the fact because Torrance was not this like teeny bopper cheerleader like everybody thought she was, and that's how she was presenting herself all the time. Popular girl, cool cheerleader, whatever. But she had her own demons. She had her own anxieties. She had her own pressures. She was, you know, being pressured by her parents to get into a good college and. Her boyfriend went away to college and was fucking cheating on her and like all this other stuff was going on in her life and it wasn't this like perfect cookie cutter captain of the cheerleading team life. And was her Jessie, were her parents pressuring her? I thought her parents No, they were. There's one scene where they're like, I want you to do a lab and she's like, Oh, you're always up my ass. It's like it's <laughs> one lab. Like, chill the fuck out. But it's she's like, in I high have school. to cheer. Remember, she's in a high school. I know, and she's but it's like, like she's the head of the of the best cheerleading team in the state. These parents seem pretty awesome. Like, no, chill the fuck I think out. that they, I think that they were pressure, doing a little too much pressure for her to like. They cared about her studies. She cared about cheerleading. Yes. And they're not wrong in being like, you gotta, you know, keep your yeah, head focused on your studies, right? But I do think that uh, that there was pressure there, and you know, it was interfering with whatever with whatever she was like wanting to do. But I think that um, her her meeting Jesse's character, Cliff, I think is his name Cliff, in, the, yes. in the movie, yes. and uh, meeting Cliff and them having this like kind of tit for tat, like he kind of judged her at first, like, ooh, you're a cheerleader. And she's mm. like, ooh, you're the guy who doesn't care and wears a Clash t-shirt. Right. Like their, their dynamic was good. And then him being Missy's brother was like a good thing. So it was like, yeah. all right, she and Missy are getting along. And she really liked her on like a real level. Like all of her other relationships with the people on the team were superficial. And so she finds these real people and who bring her down to earth and show her that there's a world outside of this, like whatever bubble they were living in, like Orange County bubble. And uh, I think that they helped her grow into a better person as well, a person that she wanted to be. Yeah, I think that's all pretty fair. Yeah, um, uh, yeah they carry, I, there was one scene I thought was very good, mm -hmm. um, the toothbrushing scene. Oh yeah, I love that. It's scene. fantastic. Oh, it's so cute. It has like these sexual undertones, yep. but then it's also very cute. It's I love that it's wordless. Yep. Um, that shows you have a lot of confidence in your actors, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kirsten Dunst obviously is a fantastic actress. She's you so know, she's, good. She's very good in this. She was at the. She was doing a lot of shit at this time too. I think. Like, she, she was. Did, um, uh, in was it was Sp Spider Man. Came Spider Man out. had just uh, come out. Yeah. Two thousand one. I think it was. She did this before Spider Man. 
This yeah. is before, yeah. Um, but she, there but were she so of course, did an interview with Vampire. Marie uh, Antoinette came years, after. Yeah. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. J- Jumanji was 95. Yeah, so she, the crazy Virgin thing suicides, was. Suicides, I think, was the right. Virgin Suicides was the year before. Yeah, she was, like, popping around. And she was the youngest person in this cast by far. So they, behind on the set, they treated her like she was, like, the one everyone kind of looked out for. Mm-hmm. Even though it was her movie, which is kind of a weird right. contrast. Right, And Gabrielle Union, meanwhile, was the oldest uh, one of this cast. She was, I think she was almost even in her 30s or close to it. So she was hanging out with the other, you know, the East Compton cheerleaders, hanging out with those girls' parents. They would go and drink afterwards and go yeah. have fun. Uh, and I guess, like, Eliza Dushku and uh, Jesse Bradford and a few of the other older, you know, people in their 20s, I guess, would go to, like, Tijuana and go have oh fun God. during this. I guess there's That's some so crazy funny. shit that happened during... Uh, Wait, I need to look up because uh, the other girls in the squad on the Clovers were a, a, a band, girl band. B- black? black? Black, B-L-A-Q-U-E? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were on the soundtrack. They were on... Oh, yeah. yeah they, they sang the, the song... So, Dome of your head from side to side, saying that you will, but you won't, and they can't. Yeah, say what you say and what you ain't. And it's that game that you play. It's a little late, as if I'm ever gonna take you back. I can see you've learned a lot about the cultural appropriation <laughs> on this show. That's good. That's good. I've got, I've got the, the morals I've set in that's here. Song, listen, that song, that song fucking goes. Uh, I man, love that so song. Yeah, they anyway, brought black, they brought those they brought those those girls in, mm-hmm. and I guess not only were they fantastic dancers. But Gabrielle Union really got along with them. Oh yeah. And and then like I said, she was hanging out with their parents. They would go to the hotel bar and drink together and stuff, Hilarious. which is really funny. Yeah. Um, the director of this, I do want to mention, because uh, this was his first movie, Peyton Reed, and he went on. Really, first movie. Not uh, his first park. his first movie <laughs> that he that he directed. Yeah, and he does he does a nice job of this. Yeah. Uh, but he's a major director right now. You know who he's directed? No, what? Ant Man. No The way. Marvel movies, yeah. Good he's, for him. He's become, uh, he's directed all three Ant-Man movies. He also directed Yes Man, which made a what? shit ton of money. And The Breakup with Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn, which which did pretty well. Directed, That's amazing. He's directed uh, episodes of The Mandalorian, too. Yes. Yep. That's um, amazing. So when he wow. was, right before this, he was directing a show called Upright Citizens Brigade, which mm-hmm. is, that's the theater I did improv at. And um, the guy that plays the choreographer is one of the four creators Sparky, Sparky Palastra yes he's one <laughs> of the four hilarious. creators of UCB along with Amy Poehler yeah uh, and uh, those four created UCB and then he was directing the UCB TV show and then he had to leave that because he got this gig yeah um, the writer of this is pretty interesting too it's a woman writer which I'm sure probably doesn't surprise Obsessed. you yes yeah of um, course no Jessi- wonder it's so good Jessica <laughs> Bendinger she was a model and um, was a cheerleader, mm-hmm. and then she had this idea, and she sent the script. The original script was like three and a half hours long, like The Godfather, they said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they trimmed it, obviously, and um, they they loved the script so much, they greenlit the movie without a director, which never happened. That's incredible. Uh, and then they they got Peyton Reed to do it, and he did a great job with yeah. it. She went on to write the Sex and City movie. <gasps> um, no wonder I love this so much. The first I daughter, uh, first daughter of that movie yes. with um, with Kitty Holmes. Uh, right, 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 yes, right? I think so. Uh, yes, but she hasn't written her. She directed a movie called Stick It, which I don't know any about. It's oh, Stick It's oh, a gymnast movie with Jeff Bridges. Yeah, that's you a gotta, good you gotta movie. review you that. You gotta one. see Stick It. What it's is, a, is that? It's gymnastics. I yeah, guess, gymna- right? it's about yeah, it's a gymnast movie. Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Um, since then, she hasn't done anything. And I don't really... That's so crazy. I don't really... Maybe she just decided uh, she to, needs do to do other things. More. I she's, don't know. She's so good. She writes... Oh, she's written songs. Um, she wrote a couple songs for Miranda Lambert. Um, but she doesn't oh, wow. do film anymore, which um, is, I think, kind of a shame because... Uh, look, I don't love this movie. I don't... I wouldn't say I even necessarily... I, I like certain elements of it. It's just like we were talking with Tin Cup. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I have a good example. So I saw The Flash. Yeah. On uh, Sunday. Oh, how was it? I haven't I seen it yet. It. I loved it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so want to see it. It's Michael Keaton is Batman in it, and I was nine years old when that Batman came out, and even the score, like, I almost just like moved to tears. Because you start yeah, thinking always. about, like, I always saw it with my dad, and like, of course. all this shit's kind of yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it's not. It's more than just the movie. It's about my. It's almost like part of my DNA. Of course. And seeing some of those things, those cues, just just really ring a lot of stuff, and I just enjoyed the hell out of it. I loved it. I got home and I'm like. I told my wife, like, I love The Flash. It was so great. A minus. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And she goes, would I like it? And I was like, I don't think you would. Yeah, like, I and don't it's, know. And it's just, it's just not, it's hitting all the things that mean a lot to me mm-hmm. that I love. She wa- she saw Batman with me. She knows, and we started driving. We had a good time together, but it, I don't think she's, I've seen Batman. It's the first VHS we've ever owned. Yeah, yeah, seen yeah. Oh, wow. A thousand times. Yeah. It doesn't mean as, as much to her. It can't. Just mm-hmm. like this movie could never mean to me what it means to her, what it means to you. For sure. And it's for a different audience. It's not for a forty-three-year-old man. It's for, for sure. It's for it's for like girls in. Gooch is laughing here. 
It's for girls in junior high, probably or early high school, that can't get into radar movies yet, mm -hmm. but this comes close, but it's also smart and has some good themes to it. Yes. So for what this movie's trying to do, it hits a home run. Uh, so I'm never gonna I'm never gonna knock this movie. Do you think were you interested in the competition parts of it? We didn't really talk about like the no. sports aspect. Weakest of part it. of the movie. Were you? Right? Do you think so? Care less. I think that that to me was another. It was so interesting because I had I had been there before. I knew what it was like. I I know you how mean that the energy feels. Or the, or the attitude there. The, the no no the actual like the competition like the other teams performing who is better like did you like watching it like uh, watching no them perform? i was bored to tears i i did, did like watching I, the performances I liked, performances i don't i didn't like i like so you weren't like impressed i get i get it was good yes yeah, they flip yeah. around um <laughs> but like i was in, i did like the back the and forth the energy of the different groups yeah. the dialogue it, like behind the scenes or mm -hmm. like how the east compton uh, school would react to Kirsten Dunst's school. That energy was very interesting to me. Yeah, so yeah. the dynamics and the dialogue, I liked a lot in the competition scenes. The actual, like, the last 10 minutes is basically just dancing. Yeah, it's know, all the... Which is it's, fine. It's the big payout. It's like any sports movie, right? The last True. 20 minutes typically is the sports scenes. I... I was... I thought it looked right. It wasn't like it was shitty cheerleading at all. No, no, no. Like, some baseball movies don't work. Like, the baseball doesn't work. For sure, for sure. It, like, it doesn't... I, but I was like, I don't really like cheerleading. I don't. Wa I would never watch cheerleading. I just don't think it's. Had you ever seen anything, any like cheerleading competitions or cheerleading routines before? Cheerleading? No, no. I don't think I ever. I never knew cheerleading competition. I mean, we had cheerleaders at my school. They sure, weren't yeah, particularly yeah. good. They were never doing anything even remotely. No, close no, to this. yeah. And that is hard. Like there are now present day like high schools will high schools are never on this level because again, like I said, you can't. Uh, they don't have men on the teams. But in college. Competitive cheerleading is amazing. Like you go to, you get a scholarship right. for college for competitive cheerleading, crazy shit. And they have separate teams. They have all star teams that you uh, that are like uh, county wide or state wide that you join, and you compete on this national level. And it's the whole country. You all go to Florida. It's this whole big thing. But I think it's people make livings out of it. You know oh, what I mean? Like it's it's a legitimate. Yeah, there's professional like, cheerleaders I, I everywhere, think... and it's I mean professional cheerleading for a sports team for like if you're a professional cheerleader, like you cheer for the. Dallas Cowboys or right. something like that. That's yeah, totally yeah. different right. than uh, being a professional cheerleader for like the the UCA, the, U, the United Cheerleading Association, okay. whatever it is. And um, because those people, they compete all over the world. They they teach camps. They do a lot of different work. And uh, it's interesting to see how people have turned it into such a prominent sport. Like if you, um, you know, I, and I'm not just saying that. I'm not saying I'm not talking out of my ass. Like no, cheerleading no, is I mean, like the biggest. I would say one of the biggest female sports that there are. Yeah. Like bigger than like you know. And it, and it has a long history. I, and yeah. I, look, I don't, I don't like watching figure skating. Yeah. I can still respect what they're doing. Be like, I could never do that. Totally. That's yeah. impressive. That's athleticism. I don't like watching this. It's boring to me, but I can appreciate mm -hmm. it. I kind of mm -hmm. felt that way watching the cheerleading. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. these people are athletes. They're flipping around. They're doing things that I could never do. Mm -hmm. You know, hats off. But I don't really want to watch this. I thought. My favorite parts of the movie were the, especially the interaction between like Kirsten Dunst and Gabrielle Union. Mm -hmm. You have two good actresses from different points of view that also it's like complicated. Like I like Kirsten Dunst's character had a lot, a lot of depth to her, like layers to her. It's like the big red character uh, mm -hmm. it was just like this big loud. Person. We don't know what she's supposed to be. It's obvious she's always going to do one note. What Kirsten Dunst's character is like, all right, I know what we're doing is wrong here, but I'm stuck in a rock and a hard place because we can't learn a new routine in time. Yeah, I like that conflict. The inner conflict. I do too. And she and did a great job with it. I like how she resolves it. Like she, well, you know, and it doesn't happen right away. Like she doesn't fix it right away. She hires this choreographer at first to give them a new routine in time for the next competition. So they're not working with a stolen routine. Turns out the same choreographer had been going up and down the state peddling the same routine to all these different people. So they get there and they already don't really like it, but they're trying to be confident. They know that it'll at least get them through to, to nationals, which is where they're trying to go in Florida. And they all of their stomachs drop and this I remember like watching this in real time being like oh fuck because they're waiting they're on deck about to perform and so and there's a team that is out right queuing up getting ready the music starts and it's their music yeah. and I remember being like oh fuck like not the same music that's insane and they watch the routine and it's that that uh you know what I'm talking yeah. about I don't know that song but that's what it is. I have never felt worse for after all the work they did, after they yeah. dealt with that asshole, Sparky Palastri, he was such a dick to them, this whole thing. And so after that, they're just totally broken. Like they, they get reprimanded. They are, they're, they're told, uh, you know, did you, is the name 
Sparky Palastri, you know, familiar to you, and Kirsten Dunst's character is basically in tears, being like, yeah, we, he helped us with choreography. He helped also five other teams. Again, they were given this bid to Nationals because they had been there before, but they were like, you better come to Nationals with a fresh new routine, whatever. And then they have to do all this research. They take, uh, you know, ballet classes, yeah. uh, swing dance classes. They watch old movies. They really put themselves into it from an art artful perspective and I really loved that dedication I thought that that's like such an interesting way to go about it like just throw yourself into it like you care this much like that's it is all that they care about especially her as a senior she needs this she wants to go out on top and as good as she can and uh you know just really put a lot of effort into it for the team yeah no it it reads off itself well and I mean you knew a mile away they're gonna finish in second place of course yeah yeah which I also do like I like that they didn't win I like that the Clovers won the only the only way it was gonna of course, right. but I, I love that the Clovers won. If the Clovers didn't win, it'd be a ridiculous movie. Like, yeah. that would be fucking insane. Like, if they, you know, whatever. But the Clovers deserved it more than anything. They were so quick, so sharp. Gabrielle Union was a great leader. She, like, she really uh, commanded the team in the right way. Again, she was showing respect for the other team while also kind of giving them the business. Like, the, you know, don't fuck around with us, whatever. And uh, I loved it. I loved it all around. MVP of the movie. Oh, my God. That's so hard. I'm going with Kirsten Dunst. I, I, I almost want to say I almost want to say Kirsten movie, Dunst. She carries yeah. the whole movie. I, I'll give it to her because she's incredible. I almost want to do an equal Kirsten Dunst Gabrielle Union split 50-50 split for MVP. I just think but, that she has to carry so much. But more she than has movie. to right. She has to do more than the movie. Um, so I think ultimately it goes least to her. valuable player. Um. Oh God, I'm gonna go her fucking. Uh, her boyfriend at the beginning of the movie his name is Aaron he's terrible and he goes away he to college awful. and he's immediately cheating on her he's a bad he's actor such a prick he's I a bad I mean actor the character. I mean the character is a character yeah. but like he's a he's awful he's supposed actor. to be though I think he's supposed to be a shitty like but cheesy he's, but he's piece not a good shit. actor yeah true I just felt like it was I such a weird him. cause like is this guy gay is he not gay that's the whole maybe that kind of question thing. that but then he's with women in the college dorm oh yeah well that's the whole thing he's this charming guy that's unassuming and whoa like he has a girlfriend. He's so, like, unthreatening. No, He'll never cheat on his girlfriend. But meanwhile, he's having sex with every girl that walks by. I do like you know how the parents mean? saw him a mile away. The oh, yeah. The guy's Totally, yeah. which so, I love. Yeah, I... I there's a, uh, he's, he's the LVP. Yeah, LVP. I, but I like but a lovable LVP. I was also going to say the other cheerleaders with her. Not... The other girls, not Eliza Dushku, who's, who's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. The other girls are terrible. Some of the other girls are bad. Like, the it's one very called one Casey. Note. The, like, one... The, like, timid girl is so fucking annoying. The one who breaks her leg, Carver, she's so annoying. Oh, yeah, c- c- yeah. Can't, yeah c- so when they do like their intro cartoon and they characters. Do the whole thing. A, Denise was annoying as fuck. I liked the twins, Whitney and and uh, or not twins. They just they are best friends. They act like twins, Whitney and. I just um, thought uh, I forget her name, Courtney. but I, I just thought they, they just weren't particularly good actresses. I I, was, I, I, I think that their whole impressed. I think their whole thing was that they're supposed to act like ditzy morons, and I think they hit it right on the head. Like they just all acted like idiots. What do you give this movie one to hundred? Oh God, like uh, probably like a ninety one. Wow! Like this all is right. my one of my all time okay. favorite 91? movies. All this right. is like a top five movie in my life. Like, really? Yes. Like okay. right up there with like Legally Blonde is a, is a favorite of mine. All like right. just uh, you know Harry Potter's all aside. I can't fit all of them in the top ten. So ninety one. Wow. Bring yeah. it on. I, I'm Hi. A, I'm gonna give this a uh, I'm gonna give this a fifty three. So this is okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my heart hurts. But okay. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, this is so we've covered some horrible justice movies. for bringing on. We, we've uh, we've covered some horrible uh. movies in the show. You know, this is nowhere near an Ed or an Eddie or uh, the Babe. These movies that infuriate me with how stupid they are and how poorly they're made. Mm-hmm. This is a well-made movie. Uh, at the end of the day, though, it's just not not for me. It's probably yeah. similar, very similar to how you look at Tin Cup. Um, it's just not very. Yeah. It's just not something I, I didn't grow up with it like Gooch did or you did or like Super my fair. wife did. Yeah. Like it's just not. So like I don't have that I don't have any emotional connection to it. I watched it for the first time, put it on. I'm like, did you oh. watch it with your wife? No, I watched it. I Ugh. watched it after she went to bed. I wish. Uh, why you should? I wish if you watched it with her, I bet you would have liked it more. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, she she was. I so I, she was so hype. I didn't know like, she liked it so much. So I, I was halfway through it. Uh, I watched it over two nights. I, w- I put it on like usually I watch the movies when she goes to bed. So yeah, like at yeah. one in the morning I'm watching these movies. Yeah, yeah. And like one point I'm Italian when I go to bed. And I tell, she's like, oh, what movie are you watching? I go, bring it on. She goes, I love that movie. Ugh. So I was like, oh, all right, I already started. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch the end of it tonight. <laughs> um, but uh, it was, um, it's fine. I think it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's not for a- an adult, but I can only judge it by being me. Like mm-hmm. I, I am, I can only look at it as a 43 year old. I'm guessing most people watching this show are guys in their. 20s, 30s, early 40s, like totally. me. And my my dad liked it a lot, but I think because he had a daughter who was a cheerleader, so he could laugh yes. at it. You know what I mean? You can laugh along. I also love that uh, they made fun of Bring It On heavily in Not Another Teen Movie. And I feel like whenever you're in 
you're being made fun of in one yes. of those like ensemble comedy movies where they make fun of like she's all that not another team mo- or uh, yeah. uh, bring it on I forget all the other ones it that was were in so that movie, big but, it was number one for three uh, weeks in Jamie, a row or Jamie Lee Presley the girl yeah, yeah. Jamie Presley I think Presley, was yeah. was supposed is like Torrance's character and she's just an idiot it's hilarious they like they're like we didn't steal your cheers and they start cheering about how they're not white and it's just like so clear that yes. they it's fucking hilarious all the way through and I appreciate a this was a, a huge hit. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. So this spawned five, four or five sequels. Yeah. All went direct to video. The they, sequels were not you good. You couldn't bring. Sequels were not good. This movie made ninety million dollars. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want to make a sequel of this, and that's what. It, I I mean I don't want to go down this road too much, but like if this was a successful movie about guys, mm-hmm. I feel like you would have probably seen a sequel. Yeah, probably. You probably because it's like right. ninety million dollars. It's like you know, know. what are we doing here? It's nothing just to bring the at. bring the cast back and I just think redo people, it again in college. Right. I think that people didn't assume that it was gonna still no. be as popular. And to be honest, they I mean they switched up the, the Kirsten Dunst wasn't in it. Like they switched up the cast. Like oh, the it cast. Was a lot no one's of, involved. No one's involved. Writer, so that director, to me, it's no like one. all right. I get that. I, I yeah. I'm not coming back just based on reputation alone. I've seen all the sequels and they're fine. But it's more of like if you love cheerleading, you like the sequels. But there, it's not for a broader audience yeah. than that. I would say that this one falls to me more in like comedy, comedy rom com with cheerleading in it versus the others, which are 100 percent cheerleading. You gooch. Now you, what would you think? I'm crazy for my uh, my 53. I think 53 is a little low. All right. well, yeah, this is your first right. watch. You know Roger Ebert. He went back. He rewatched it again. He called it the Citizen Kane Whoa. of cheerleading movies. Whoa! That's, that. that's huge. Now, I what, think you should watch it again with be, your wife what, and, and and see how you feel. You got you got to stick it. Well, it's more gymnastics. Yeah, uh, stick it is. I, I don't. Like I don't enjoy fired stick up. It. Fired up. Oh, you should watch fired up. fired up. Ask Jeff Lowe about fired up. I'll, I'll say this. Of, I bet he of does. the cheerleading movies I've seen, this is also the Citizen Kane. I would agree with that. I don't think I think that's Good. a weird. No, you're actually right. So Roger Ebert does did this thing, mm-hmm. which infuriates me, uh, where he would give a movie a bad review, or it wasn't even bad. He was like middle, or kind of very similar to my review, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then acclaim. This movie becomes very popular. Movie becomes very popular, and he goes back and re. re- you can't do that. You can't double stamp and triple stamp. Yeah, that seems like, crazy. That's bullshit. To rewatch again. I don't like that. I love Roger Ebert. Knowing greatest critic like of all it. time. My you thing. Can't do that shit. My thing with that is like I I respect his reviews and I respect all of that but I I guess maybe you go into a movie like this ready to like grade it harder than what it actually is and then you see how much people enjoy it and it's just like all right every once in a while you can just sit back and enjoy a movie you don't have to think that hard about it and I feel like that's one of these movies a little bit and maybe I in think that a lot case of it. you you know what I mean yeah, uh, yes I think though you get to the point where it's like I don't need to grade this movie so harshly because it's just a fun movie you know what I mean but you have to know that when you watch it the first time you can't be the movie expert and like judge it harshly and be like well if I was having more fun with it it'd be this but it's like alright then you either have fun all the time or, you, or you're or you a stickler you gotta pick one you I think I'm just, a stickler yeah I'm a stickler. I, and I respect that I respect that you're a stickler I think I'll, you're wrong I'll, I'll be my stickler I think stuff. you're wrong I think you should rewatch it again with your wife and, yeah. and see I, I how think it's received I, 50's average this is not, this is no, not you're a bad right. grade you're right. I, I put this you're ahead right. of draft day I have it just worse than remember the titans it's in for me. It's okay. the middle of that's the road. A, that's good company. Which, which movie handles uh, racial inequality in America better? <laughs> remember the Titans <laughs> remember or Bring It On? Bring It On. Uh, bring it on <laughs> a full stop. Honestly. Because remember the Titans no joke. is it's, like, it's so disney and it's so and true, it makes yeah. it so simple. Great example. I'm glad you, that's a great question, Gooch. Remember the Titans <laughs> has that scene uh, they're in, they go to a camp together for like three weeks, and then racial, Brandon was saying, also, racial problems are solved in three weeks in this camp. Yeah, it's crazy. It's never solved here. No. It's just more of an understanding right. and trying to a appreciate. A lesson is learned. A lesson also, is learned, and appreciation fixed, is learned, but nothing is fixed. And they right. appreciate each other, they respect each other, and they're, but they're, nothing has been, there's no great problem been solved because no. it's not that. Racism is not simple, no. obviously. It's very complicated. Mm-hmm. This movie is so much more intelligent and so much more respectful of ra- of racial uh, matters than River Titans. Do you agree, Gooch? You think yeah, I'm yeah, no, yeah. I agree. So uh-huh. that's a, that's a, it is. It's crazy. That's a hat tip to bring it on. I, the, yeah. the, I think the only reason I like River Titans even a little bit more is because I just like football more than cheerleading. Yeah, that's So fair. I give it more of a pass. Fair. But, um, but yeah, I, I put them right they're very close. Very similar. So, no, I did not hit this movie. I think it's, it's all right. So it's okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Um, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having um, me. This was be, lovely. Be back next week with Brandon Walker. I texted him last night to see what movie he wanted to do, and he's like, I'll get back to you. So I don't know <laughs> what we're going to watch next week. It'll be okay. something. Actually, I'm sorry. Next week, you will not see a show. We're going to be off for July 4th week. Um, mm. It will be the week after that you will get a show with myself and my swollen hillbilly friend. Uh, thank you so much for watching. See you in two weeks.